give us a sense. I, I want to let the audience know, um, because some have just heard sound bites, whether that was on social or, you know, breaking news in the evening. Could we go to some of the basics of autonomous driving with the various levels of autonomous? Can you kind of acquaint everybody with, you know, level one, level two, and, and what sure. these levels do? Yeah, no problem. So um, there, there are six levels of autonomous driving, starting with level zero and then topping out at level five. Level zero and, and level one is basically no autonomous driving or very, very minimal autonomous driving. So don't don't worry about those. It gets interesting starting at level two. So that's where Tesla's at uh, today. Level two is uh, essentially hands off. You can, you know, you have to um, be in the driver's seat. You have to be paying attention. You have to be ready to take over. But in most situations, the car can drive by itself and you can you can keep your hands off the wheel. The key there is it's partial and there is driver assistance because a lot of folks, and this is sad, I have to bring this up. When you go and buy, let's say that 2022 or even the newer 23 model Mercedes, mm -hmm. folks are not always getting a proper walk around. I mean, it's just overwhelming. Right. Um, and so we need to be clear on that. I, I want to compound what you're saying because folks heard, you know, the salesperson said, oh, yeah, this car drive itself it park itself and everything. And that that's um, that's that's misleading. Because they don't teach you how to pop the hood. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, uh, if you're working at the local dealer, <laughs> with today's modern technology, we need at least a half a day walk around. It's not like back in the day, uh, here's the horn. Oh, by the way, this is exciting. Here's how do you use cruise control. <laughs> wow. I mean, isn't that right, Chris? Some of this is misleading. Well, yeah, I, I, think, there, I think there's been some... Um, some litigation recently or some legislation uh, in California um, specifically to the, to, you know, as to the name full self-driving. So Tesla's name for its technology, full self-driving, um, you know, on its face. Yes, I agree. And I think most people would agree that is misleading. Um, on the other hand, Frank, uh, you know, this, this technology is constantly, evolving and improving. And, um, uh, you know, I, I personally have been a Tesla customer for about six or seven years. Um, and, and I use the, uh, you know, the FSD. And, uh, you know, I, I can say from my point of view that, um, you know, it's, it's getting better and better every month. Um, you know, to go back to your original point, though, the you know, the top level, level five of, of self-driving is, you know, no steering wheel in the car. And oh, my. I think, yeah. So I think we're, you know, we're a ways away from, from level five, uh, probably decades away, uh, in my opinion. And um, can I can I interject real quick, Chris, when you say yeah. decades away, decades away, that certainly yeah. isn't our ability as engineers to design the technology, would you more say, say that it is a legislative for codifying our streets and so on and so forth? Is, is that why we're so far away from that steering wheel less I, vehicle? I, you know, I, I think there's a couple of reasons. I think, you know, the, the first reason is, and uh, you know, everybody listening, we've all seen this, you know, every few months, there's a, a, you know, a serious accident involving a Tesla vehicle and immediately the, you know, the media jumps on it, you know, serious accident, fatal accident involving a Tesla, you know, was full self-driving involved, maybe full self-driving was involved. And, you know, immediately there's a lot of, a lot of criticism of Tesla. You know, the people at Tesla would push back on that and say, and they've got statistics, you know, to, to, to back up their position that their full self-driving is actually several times uh, more safe than, you know, than the average human driver. You know, they basically calculate the number of, of collisions based on the number of miles driven. And I think it's something like five times uh, more safe than a human driver. But the difference, you know, but the difference in how we perceive it is, 
um, you know, if there if there's even one accident with a with a Tesla FSD, there's a you know a significant public outcry. But you know, here in I don't know how things are in uh, in Phoenix, but here in Las Vegas, there's you know there's you know there's big pileups on the highways here basically every other weekend, and the media barely you know barely reports on it. Yeah, I mean, if we if we went back to brass taxes as to why ADAS, you know, driving awareness systems and, and corrective steering, lane change, it is really to tackle what traditionally is 47 some odd thousand roadway deaths a year. A lot of you ask that question like, OK, why do I need this technology? For what? I can drive. I, I, I love my cruise control. Why make it adaptive? It's because ultimately we're tr- that's a big number, Chris. And Lord knows what the worldwide number is. I, it's probably hundreds of thousands of roadway deaths yeah. that can occur. Yeah, it's, it's it's a few hundred thousand per year. Um, and so I, I think I think the people listening will uh, will will be aware, as most of us are, that uh, you know Elon Musk quite famously has been, uh, you know, promising next year, next year, next year. For, he, he's, for, eager. Well, he's eager. <laughs> he's eager. He's eager. He's eager. Been, he's been promising it for, I, I think, actually, when I bought my first Tesla six or seven years ago, I think he was promising it next year. Well, I got to say on that point, you're in Vegas. Yeah. We are yeah. utterly yeah. disappointed with that tunnel, that tunnel thingy. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen it, Chris, explain to the folks if they go to Vegas and they hear about that tunnel, that that boring company. Yeah. What are your take I, on I that? Think <laughs> yeah, I think it's like a I think it's a fifty million dollar tunnel, and they, they basically built a tunnel uh, between the convention center and uh, I think the other side of the Las Vegas Strip. Um, and I guess the best way to put it is that uh, the tunnel did not turn out. As it was originally uh, conceived. I'll just leave it at that. I mean, those original plans that we were teased Wait, now on, I'm curious. Well, it's a, just a tunnel, but the planning. I mean, you got to love Elon. I mean, he's a marketer. He's brilliant. We're not going to knock uh, the innovation. But the plans that we saw, the tunnel's coming. Oh, it was are, so like, like you thought it was a Jetson. Are we talking about the, the, underground, the, underground, the underground tunnel? tunnel yeah. But, it, but Elon and, and Chris, you saw that as well. It, it, it made it seem like. Wow, we're going to travel 200 miles an hour. In this tunnel. <laughs> but it's really, I mean, it's shtick in my opinion. It's just a tunnel, <laughs> but it's uh, it's an Elon Musk tunnel, and it gets you over to the convention center. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it uh, maybe saves you a couple minutes. However, in L.A., though, I think I think there is some purpose behind at least the idea of boring a tunnel in a place like LA where you've got the 405 mm-hmm. and it's just a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, you live, I, I, I think people uh, spend uh, almost as much time as they sleep on the freeways out of California, but, but uh, I find that fascinating. So can we go back to some of this legislation? Of course, no scandal, no sizzle, but the California DMV is sort of accusing Tesla of deceptive practices in regards to labeling full self-driving. What's the sentiment amongst the industry in your circles, Chris? Is that a fair assessment? Uh, well, there's no, there's no question that that's, a, <laughs> that's an optimistic name uh, for what is really, um, at least today, really uh, driver assistance, not, not full self-driving. Um, you know, uh, but, you know, that, that being said, I think the you know, the general sentiment among technologists is that the Tesla FSD is an amazing technology and it's um, rapidly improving and that the gap between Tesla and its competitors um, is seems to be increasing over time, not decreasing over time. That's what strikes me as incredible. Um, and it has me worried um, I've had some hate email on this, Chris, but I, I'm, I'm not going to predict the future, but I think, I think the domestics, uh, without mentioning names really need to catch up. I mean, it's nice to hear that overall the technology's out. And then as we just reported on these charging stations that all manufacturers can eventually use, there seems to be a culture of 
of sharing the technology so everyone succeeds. But if the big three don't catch up, I mean, we're, we're talking some sophisticated technology, and that's what you're hearing um, through the industry and, and your peer network, I imagine. Yeah, you know, the, the thing about it, Frank, is um, the, the technology itself. So there's, ba there's basically two, um, two main forms of, uh, of self-driving technology. One is called LiDAR, yep. and the other is, is computer vision. Um, Tesla's using computer vision. Um, its competitors, for the most part, are using um, LiDAR. Um, there's some... You know some technical differences between the two, but you know in theory both of them can can enable full self driving. But what really sets Tesla apart from its competitors today is the amount of data that that they have collected and that they continue to collect um, every day. So I think they have somewhere around 200 or 300 thousand vehicles on the road today using their FSD. And they're able to collect um, feedback from all of those vehicles about, um, you know, whether it's near collisions, um, uh, uh, you know, different types of traffic infrastructure. And then they're able to, to take this data that they collect and use it to retrain their machine learning models so that we basically retrain the software that makes the decisions that, that drive the car. And so that software is continuously getting smarter, whereas Tesla's competitors have, uh, you know, uh, basically close to zero, uh, you know, vehicles on the road today. So uh, unless and until that changes, um, you know, Tesla is going to continue to, the, the gap between Tesla and the competitors will, will continue to grow. Yeah, and I think uh, the naysayers initially said there's just no way that you can pull off full self-driving without LIDAR. And with the data that's being collected, as you stated with Tesla, and sort of this machine learning and observations, hundreds and hundreds, probably billions of lines of code that they're, they're able to analyze, mm -hmm. there is technically not an argument that you need LIDAR. LIDAR, of course, being sort of a high-resolution image, you know, almost this sort of, dimensional imagery that can yeah. call out objects a little better. Tesla said, nope, we're using computer, computer vision, vision basically yep. to collect that data. Yeah. I mean, I think that's huge. And your statement breaks it down to the technicals of why perhaps the competitors need to, I mean, do you see that? Like I, I the domestics have said they're coming, like GM is coming out with the Equinox. Um, mm -hmm. Now we're getting into just full on EV, depending on what level of yeah. technology um, yeah. Do you see any competitor right now that seems to be keeping up? Are you are you worried that the distance is continuing to increase? Uh, as of today, the distance is the, that gap is continuing to grow. The distance is is increasing. Um, and, you know, despite, I think, you know, throughout 2022, there were a number of um, announcements from Ford and other incumbents about EVs and about, um, you know, a, a, a autonomous vehicles. Um, but in terms of actually putting the cars on the road and getting it out there, um, nobody's doing it like Tesla. Yeah, that's our understanding as well. I mean, it's, um, I think in the end, the cons and what's really shocking, Susie, is there's next to no marketing. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. I mean, Tesla's not, like, they're not doing Super Bowl commercials. They're not. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there, there's such a huge internal, the widget is so good, it's going to sell to the masses. I mean, that's the case, isn't it, Chris? They, the Tesla not only has a, a $0 marketing budget, um, Elon uh, fired the entire uh, communications department, I think in 2018 or 19, and basically said, look, I can do, uh, you know, I, I can do a better job or, or a more effective job with my Twitter account. This is before he owned Twitter. So I can do a more effective job marketing this stuff with my Twitter account, slashed the marketing budget to zero, fired the communications team. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
the product yeah, I, is that good. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, I uh, there there has been some drama behind Twitter. However, mm-hmm. um, there is a huge uh, base when you're talking about you know. Whatever Elon is discussing at three in the morning, it's not always <laughs> Tesla related, but with all the great things that he's doing, I mean, you're talking 25, 30, 100 million views. Um, that's priceless. Yeah. Yep. And I think well, Tesla should uh, be excited for level five, Frank. Well, I don't know. Because there won't it. be any steering wheels. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Chris. You know, actually, <laughs> I, I, wanted, I wanted to tie that back to, uh, to a, a point that you made about Los Angeles and the tunnels a few minutes ago. So, you know, when, when, when we think about autonomous driving and going from level two and, you know, gradually over time getting closer to level five, you know, most of us think about, you know, the convenience of being able to sit in the car and, uh, you know, do something other than actually drive the car, you know, make better use of our time. But one of the, um, uh, you know, sort of secondary benefits of getting to level five autonomous driving is we're going to we're going to see basically the end of traffic jams. So once all the cars on the road are able uh, are, are capable of full self driving, then we're going to see uh, um, a technology called orchestration. So basically, instead of each car independently making its own decisions about how fast to drive, where to turn, where to stop, when to change lanes, et cetera, et cetera. There'll be an orchestrator that knows, um, you know, the, the starting point and the destination for each car that's on the road. And this orchestrator will be able to uh, basically calculate an optimal uh, route, uh, you know, for each of the cars in such a way that the, the cars don't, you know, never have to stop and probably don't even have to slow down very much. So, you know, tunnels might be, uh, you know, might be something effective in the short term, but uh, in, in the long term, it's actually autonomous driving that's going to take care of all these traffic problems. Yeah, it's incredible. We had the folks, uh, ZF uh, North America, uh, ZF out of, uh, originally out of uh, Europe, uh, out of Germany, um, we've done some work with them, and they were talking about the the connected vehicle. Like, we're going to communicate. And and uh, if you're just joining us, we got Chris Peach, uh, smarterai.camera. Please visit the site. Uh, all kinds of uh, precision ADAS and DMS for trusted data and decisions. And, Chris, we need trusted data. We don't need fake news under no. hood. <laughs> <laughs> tell, us a, right. tell us a little bit more. We'd like to highlight Smarter AI. What do you folks do over there? Yeah. Uh, so Smarter AI is a, uh, actually a software platform for AI cameras with computer vision. And, uh, and, we, and we make uh, vehicle cameras uh, and computer vision solutions for commercial vehicles. So think about, uh, you know, fleets of vehicles, um, you, know, being, uh, you know, being driven in different industries. And we're the guys that make the cameras that help those vehicles to do their jobs a little bit safer. Which we need, for sure. Um, and these camera systems are by far, uh, the, the technology advancements, Susie, are just incredible. When you think about just the last probably three years, yeah. what are you seeing as the big breakthrough for camera systems? I see here Smarter AI, biothermal cameras. What are you seeing as, as really making some incredible headway within the camera arena so that we... Uh, can see properly uh, as we're driving. Yeah, so there, there's there's really two uh, you know two key enabling technologies. Um, one is we we now have uh, computer chips that uh, are are small enough and efficient enough to run in in cameras, and yet provide a very high uh, level of computation for machine learning and computer vision models. And the second enabling technology is 5G networks. So basically mobile networks that are capable of delivering uh, high quality video uh, across the network uh, at any given point in time and at at any different location. Yeah, I think 5G is, I mean, a lot of us, we, we see 
well, we have 5G capability, but we don't get it right now. I, I, mean, don't, I don't like my 5G. You don't no. like, but no, 5G is future. Uh, we know many countries mm-hmm. uh, across the globe. Uh, uh, China seems to be um, with a gazillion cameras, you know, a whole different <laughs> deal there. Um, may I ask this question, just so we can either feel good or not feel good. How do we stand as a country in the arena of camera systems? Are we leading the way or is there a particular country that that really, wow, they're so innovative, if I can ask that? Yeah, um, well, it, it depends how, how you look at it. But I think, you know, it's the, it's the same as with a lot of other uh, computer technologies. Uh, America is certainly at the forefront in terms of the design and development of uh, computer vision and camera technologies. Um, in terms of the manufacturing, though, that's something that, uh, that is largely done uh, in China. Uh, and we, you know, we certainly expect to see that change uh, over the coming years, but, you know, the, much like... Uh, much like uh, self-driving, that's that's a bit of a slow process. It is, and I think I think on that topic, uh, some would ask, "Well, wait a minute, what are you saying? I mean, manufacturing could shift out of China. China has a major issue with demography right now, oh, yeah. um, and you know, consumers and producers of a society have to exist. The exact exact opposite would be Mexico, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know mm-hmm. Canada uh, currently." Um, is it, it seems to be on a trajectory where they're 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 pretty top heavy um, with a retiring population, and and I imagine that would take some time, but also shift manufacturing. Um, we have here in the desert, here in Phoenix, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, uh, multi multi billion dollar project. It almost seems like perhaps there is this revolution to bring back high tech manufacturing a little bit more home side. Yeah, it, it, it is happening, um, but it takes a tremendous amount of uh, investment, and, and it takes and it takes time uh, once you have that investment to bring the manufacturing uh, capacity online. So that's that's something that's going to play out, you know, f- for the rest of this decade, basically. As a Tesla owner that has FSD, um, a premium was paid to yep. be able to have that that software update and, and enjoy that feature. Mm-hmm. Fair to say, mostly safe. Of course, the media will sizzle out what they do. They like to sizzle. <laughs> Breaking news! And then really, it's not. It was a driver that uh, was drunk or something. I think it's an unfair approach to all the great things that Tesla has going on. But with this recent lawsuit, that's being presented as full self-driving may not be categorized as a phrase. That's uh, truly what it is. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that you should have a refund? I mean, what's the sentiment of the Tesla driving community? You paid uh, additional. No, No, I, I I don't, I don't feel that I should have a a refund. Um, And, you know, if we, if we judge by the number of cars that are, using the Tesla FSD and the number of other cars that have requested access to it and are waiting for access to it. Um, you know, the general sentiment of Tesla customers is the same as mine. They can't wait to get their hands on it. Yeah. I I can, I can see that, um, somewhat active on Twitter, you know, with Ranch Nation, your mechanic, I can tell you that I, I probably not have seen, a single brand over the last 50 years, and I've tried to really examine this, and I think you're speaking on this, Chris, that has such a diehard, rooted following for the, not so much for Tesla, but for the belief in the technology and where we're going uh, to the future. And I don't think you can break that back. I don't think you can break that following's back. No matter the mudslinging that's going on in the media. And let's just say this, Chris, I think you'll agree, uh, our not-so-cooperative government, my understanding is Elon wasn't invited to that big meeting in the White House. He's not been getting a fair shake. 
<laughs> well, you, you know, you guys were, were were mentioning earlier about the charging network and uh, and Tesla. Uh, I guess they haven't opened it up yet, but announcing that uh, you know some plans to open up their charging network to their competitors. And uh, I think they have about seven and a half billion reasons to, uh, you know, to want to do that. Name and, one. Uh, and, and, well, the it's uh, it's a se- seven and a half billion dollars of federal government subsidies. Ah, there you go. That are going to be that are that uh, were recently announced uh, for EV manufacturers, subject to the condition that uh, you know that the uh, the charging networks had to be open. You think that was a no-brainer for Elon and the team? I mean, seven and a half billion is quite a bit of money. They have the largest margins by way of profit uh, for the vehicles that they make. They sit pretty healthy. Um, do you think Elon second guessed that or no? It's definitely not a no-brainer, and 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 actually, I'm I'm surprised that they've announced that they've announced it. Um, if it was my decision to make, I would I would not have done that. I think they're their charging network is such a huge competitive advantage. Um, I wouldn't be in any hurry to, to open that up. Interesting. Yeah. I I mean, Elon has been on record to say that, I mean, obviously he, he's building brilliant, innovative products across the board. He's, he's really pushing the envelope. He's got some of the most talented engineers and, and culture, um, across the globe, some don't agree. He seems to be very straightforward. Get it done, and if not, you know we got to move on. He's got a mission uh, with the team, but um, it seems to me, with the history and his record, that it's gone beyond naysayers. And there's this nasty mudslinging going on, and it shocked me too. Right before we went on air to hear about this, but as I was saying originally. Elon's been on record that it's a future for all. Now, he's going to guard the technology, but I think that's what makes it that much more favorable, fascinating, and intriguing that he truly is carving out a future for all. You know, the um, the amount of foresight, but, you know, the, the actual technology behind the charging network is, you know, there's there's nothing proprietary about it or you know it's not that tesla knows how to charge cars you know better than ford or gm or anybody else but the foresight to uh you know to make the investment you know starting years ago and to build that um charging network um you know today has just again put them so far ahead of uh any of their competitors yeah that makes sense hey we've got a few minutes chris uh, again, I remind folks, uh, get on uh, to smarterai.camera. Um, great goings-on, dash cams, biothermal cameras, body cams. Boy, if, if it's got a camera, Chris, you're all over it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. But I do have a question, and, and we do periodically um, will ask our guests their take. What do you think our grandkids will view our current state transportation wise as they look back will they laugh at us that a we owned a vehicle and b that we actually drove a vehicle what do you think uh if you had said our kids i would say no but grandkids yeah i i think i i'm inclined to agree with you um you know pr- private vehicle ownership is going to continue to to decrease and uh, certainly by the time um you know, by the time our grandkids are are of legal age to drive, um, yeah, I, I think we're 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 going to be. I think we're either going to be at level five, or we're going to be knocking on the door of level five. That's wild. Um, some some time ago, back in 2019, we were honored to have Gridlock Sam Shorts, oh, who was a him. New York City traffic yep. commissioner. In fact, when I grew up in New York, he was the not that I had a care, I wasn't driving, we were hopping subways, but he had a book, he has a book out, No One at the Wheel. And in his book, Chris, and this was exciting to hear him sort of elaborate on this, he's predicting mid-century you could be arrested for driving in certain <laughs> jurisdictions. That's a bold claim, but I think, I think we're headed that direction. <laughs> 
Could be, could be. Could be. Uh, Chris, you've got any events that we can uh, share with folks? Uh, where can folks find you? Where can people find me? Um, let's see. Um, we're going to be at the, uh, there's an NAB show, National Association of Broadcasters show here in the greatest city in the world, Las Vegas. That's coming up, I think, April 10th and 11th. So we're going to be there in person. And uh, people can find us online at, uh, at smarterai.camera. Uh, and we're also on, on Twitter and LinkedIn and the usual places. Awesome. Susie, pretty fascinating. That is. It's unbelievable. We'll make sure to have all those details in show notes. Chris, you're a busy guy, and we are just honored that you made some time here on Wrench Nation. Are we going to the NAB, Frick? We're broadcasting. Well, I don't know. We're we may, broadcasting. We may, may, we may have to surprise <laughs> Mr. Chris and the team at Smarter AI. I may just show up with my little camera or GoPro. <laughs> You are broadcasters. Yes, yes, we are. We got a whole slew of stuff, and we get out to Vegas often. Uh, it's always fun. Uh, SEMA and Apex yep. and a, a ton of the shows. So you're doing great things in the field, and we want to follow up with you here in the next several months. Chris, you always have an open mic. Anything that we can do to help uh, spread the word. It's all fascinating to us. Yes. Thank you, guys. Of course. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, people think of cameras and, you know, some of the old timers, they, you know, but we need the cameras. We need the yep. cameras. You know, when he uh, was talking about uh, people running out that who wanted Teslas, you know, we're going to get a Tesla. But what do you think? Who do you think that demographic was? You think those were like engineers? Well, I think initially I, I really do. I believe, you know, anybody that was in, in the technicals on the technical side of things. Sure. They were gravitated to that. Yeah. But now I don't think so. I think the market is wide open. Right. And the adoption for Tesla. I think, Chris, when he was saying, we got to get our act together yep. um, regarding the other lines of vehicles, and it can't just be price alone. You can't just come out with a lower price point vehicle and expect to compete if the technology is not there. And that's that's some serious stuff. Yep. Um, you guys in studio, get on the mic. Uh, would you buy an electric vehicle? Um, no, not really. Why? I, Why? Real quick, we got a quick. I second. don't necessarily trust the trust the equipment today. Seeing too many of the the accidents and man, stuff and like you're that. you're like young Gen Z. Yeah. I thought you'd be all over that wow. stuff. No, what a, you wouldn't. Why? Because I see all these these cars, and without the drivers, it gives me anxiety. Especially well, forget when about they're next. To me. Forget about autonomous. Let's just talk electric vehicle. You'd get rid of your ice, your your internal nope. combustion. You would not do it. No. Man, we, we should do a whole show. We need to interview like 15 of you Gen Zers. That's right. <laughs> because us uh, Generation Xers. We'd do it. We'd do it. As long as it's got good <laughs> tunes, we would do it. You guys rock for hanging with Wrench Nation. If you miss bits and pieces of the show, remember we re-air Saturday right here on Evitt's campus, 88.7 The Pulse, and our world maybe not so famous podcast. Oh. Every Sunday evening we upload that. It's an honor. And thank you, KMAT out of uh, California, you Saturday rock stars listening to the show. We'd love to hear your comments, wrenchnation.tv. As I tell you every week, be safe, hug each other, and never forget to hug a mechanic.